Direct from Foxborough, Massachusetts, the gem of Norfolk County, and taped at the studios of Foxborough Cable Access, it's Foxborough Central. And here's your host, Bob Hickey. And hello to another episode of Foxborough Central. I am Bob Hickey, your host, thanking you for taking a little bit of time to join with me and my guests as we talk about the people, events, and organizations that make Foxborough truly the gem of Norfolk County. Today we're going to talk about an event, and that event is Election Day. And as you, I'm sure, being good voters, you all go out to the polls if you're of a certain age. Um, you do, don't you? Of course you do. Well, I will see you there, and the reason I'll see you there is because we provide live election coverage. This year the election is on May 4th, it's a Monday, and you are encouraged to come out and cast your vote, do your civic duty, and make your voice and opinion heard as you vote on our elected leaders. But how does the vote magically get tabulated? How do the polls magically open? And how does everything magically happen the way it's supposed to happen in accordance with the laws? Well, we here in Foxborough depend upon our election warden. And our election warden is Kathy Brady. Kathy. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you. That is my longest preamble. Well, it may not be my longest preamble. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it ranks up. No, you know me better than that. <laughs> I've known Kathy for many years. Uh, and she is one of those... Uh, great civic citizens, uh, not only as a volunteer with the JCs and many other things that she does, Founders Day, so many other things. One of the things that you do way behind the scenes that we really take for granted, unfortunately, is the election warden. And these are the things that fascinate me, and I hope my viewers as well, <laughs> is the things that make Foxborough work, the behind the scenes thing. So can you tell us what an election warden is, what you do? I'll try. Uh, in the basics of the job are to make sure on election day, especially, that everyone is able to vote without feeling coerced, harassed, or otherwise pressured. Come in, vote as they may. That everything is orderly on election day. That all election law is followed, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and that everything is is controlled, secured, and tabulated appropriately so we can have confidence in the outcome. Now, this is an appointed position. Yes. And you've been doing this for how many years now? I became the warden when Marie Crimmins and her warden of 20-something years, 25, 26 years, uh, David Pignato, Mr. Pignato, moved on. Yes. So uh, at that time, they, they both decided to transition through. I had been assisting David at the polls, mm -hmm. uh, and he was teaching me the ropes. Uh, so as Marie retired as clerk, David also uh, stepped aside as warden, and uh, I was asked to continue when Bob Cutler took over as clerk. Okay. So, uh, and then uh, he was elected five years ago? He's been in office for, well, he took two years of, the final two years of Marie's last oh, term. So right. it's, been, uh, it's been seven. It's been, it's been a very fast and efficient seven years, has yeah. it not? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> for the efficiency part, anyway. Well, it seems so. And, I, you know, that one sentence you gave is not really all that goes into it because you have a, a plethora of volunteers who are out there. Uh, manning the different stations. We have five wardens, wards here in Foxborough. Five precincts. Five, five precincts, precincts, thank yes. you. Yes. Well, that's why you're the professional and just the TV <laughs> host, because I uh, get the names wrong. Yeah. So we have five precincts, and yes. each one has their own tabulation, and then you rally it up at the end of the night? Correct. Yeah. And I hope that you will be joining me live on election night as we provide coverage. And this is through courtesy, and I'm not, not blowing the horn here, <laughs> but this is actually as a courtesy because we get access, I don't mean access to the vote, we certainly don't have that, but there's a lot of regulation that goes into the whole process. It's not just a willy-nilly, ah, let's just count the votes, put them in a bread box no. and we'll, we'll count them. There's a lot of regulations that you have to follow as far as certifying the vote. Right. Uh, yeah, on the day of the election, well, leading up to the election as well, there's quite a few steps that take place, many of which people don't ever see. Um, the voting machines that we're so, so grateful to have to use rather than having to tabulate by hand on ledger sheets. Um, those have to be tested uh, in advance of the election. They all, they, all of the uh, information is on memory cards, which are sent to us by a company. Um, those are tested to make sure that they're accurate, make sure that the machines are functioning properly. We do that uh, usually a week to two weeks before the election. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be generally myself, Bob Cutler, the town clerk, and Terry Carter, the uh, assistant warden. Um, so we get together, run those tests, make sure everything's all right, then we have to seal those machines to show that they've been tested and 
uh, turn those results in to show that everything was working properly. Once we get them to the election, the, yeah, the security of those, of the ballots themselves, uh, before they're cast, they all have to be accounted for to make sure that there are no ballots out there that are uh, uh, wandering around and, and uh, having anything unusual happen with them. Um, and then when the results come out, um, a lot of these steps are by law, have to be visible to people. Mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't mean people can wander around near the things, but it needs to be visible so uh, in the open. Uh, and that's why some of the peculiar little things that happen and people wonder why they can't stand in certain places and they have to be in other places, it's uh, because of the laws uh, in keeping the ballots secure and allowing the voters comfortable conditions under which to cast their ballots and feel that, that uh, um, they have the privacy that they need and the freedom to mark their ballots. Very good. And I think that's what I was getting at the uh, end of the night, and I'll, I'll call it a dance. Uh, <laughs> I'm allowed to be out in the hallway, and then at a certain point I'm allowed to come in, but we have to stay at a certain level. And right. so it's all very well coordinated, I would say. And I think we have a good system down where uh, we're able to provide coverage and give people uh, on-the-spot results, but at the same time it's all the legitimate process, and right. uh, we don't at least we try not to interfere with all the things that you're doing, because I know that you've got many more important things to worry about than old Bob Hickey and where he's standing. So. Right. We, we get a lot of questions at the end of the night for um, folks who come to observe uh, the election and uh, to, you know, for a rally for a candidate or just to provide public information about the results. And, and the reasons there are certain places you can and can't be is that you're allowed to be in that room to see how we're tabulating things how all the ballots are being handled, um, but you can't be so close it could possibly interfere or affect, uh, influence in any way what's going on. And that's why you know, people, we want you to be there, free to watch what we're doing, but we need, do need to keep people in certain places. Now that actually brings up a great point because you're talking about the end of the night and we're talking polls open at 7 a.m., close right. at 8 p.m., yes. so the count begins after 8 p.m., so right. we're really talking 8.39 sometimes, depending upon complexity, right. write-ins, that sort of thing. Yes. It can be a late night, but starting at the beginning of the day, there's also that importance for fairness, and, and you've got, right. what is it, a 250-foot? 150. The, 150. Uh, that's, yes. 250 uh, for me when I'm running for something, 150 <laughs> for everybody else. Right. <laughs> no, again, by statute, um, there's a, a line, a radius, 150 feet from the main entrance to the polling place, um, within which nobody may do anything that's, sort of, no campaign activity is allowed. Mm -hmm. And that is why there's restriction on you know, wearing buttons, hats, shirts that are campaign related, specific to that. Uh, election uh, to the ballot that's on that day. You can't wear those inside the polling place. Uh, the folks who are holding signs, those familiar locations where you see the groups of people, that's because they need to stay outside that 150 foot uh, radius of the main entrance to the polling place. Um, and at times that has been difficult, especially when we get uh, other elections. State elections, for instance, is more of an issue because we often have people who don't live in town or are right. unfamiliar with that. Um, but that's also one of my responsibilities as warden is to, you know, go out, make sure that people are keeping that line uh, and that everybody is behaving in a civil manner toward each other. Uh, there are no confrontations that are going to cause difficulty no, or make anyone that uncomfortable. Ever happen? We have had times yeah, when know. people have uh, decided not to... Maybe let their emotions to... get away from them? Yes, or... yes. Fortunately, we've been able to settle it. For the most part, the people who are out there are also town residents who are supporting candidates or causes, um, and we all know each other. And yeah. that's always part of my uh, sort of statement to them when I go out there is, remember, we're all neighbors. Tomorrow, we're still going to be neighbors. Let's make sure we can do that. That's, that's, that's a great way of putting <laughs> yeah. it, too. I think that's an important thing to say for any election because exactly. uh, people who are running are all volunteers, and it's not as if uh, uh, any of the candidates are you know, out to get anybody. It's They're all running for whatever reasons they're running for, but it's all to make the community a better place, and that's the important thing so. to remember with any election is that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to work. That's the way it's supposed to work, yes. and here in Foxborough, hopefully it does. It seems to. It seems to, indeed. Uh, I would then say, so you're appointed by selectmen or by the town clerk? No, all of us who were election workers uh, annually, 
are submitted uh, to, for appointment to the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Uh, so as it's part an, of the annual uh, appointment process. Exactly. So like all committee members town, and all right. that, we are, um, our names are submitted in the same fashion for appointment by the Board of Selectmen. Okay, great. So then you're appointed by the Board of Selectmen and the term runs for one year and then the yes. following year it gets reappointed. And so then how does, how does the election warden, because, and this might be my uh, not knowing fully everything that goes on, but the town clerk's office is also responsible for elections? Yes, because the clerk's office is responsible for all of the sort of the paperwork, the documentation mm -hmm. of everything that occurs leading up to it. Um, the they nomination certify of signatures. They certify signatures for candidates who are nominated. Um, they do all the communication of results, official results, because at the end of the night of the election, what we announce are unofficial, unofficial. results. The results aren't finalized till a minimum of 10 days, the, that deadline may vary, um, whether it's local or state or federal elections. Okay. Um, but there's a time period when there are still ballots that need to be accounted for. Uh, overseas absentee ballots have a different deadline. They need to be postmarked by election day, but they may uh -huh. be received later. Um, any provisional ballots that are cast for people whose um, Registration status, we can't determine clearly at the polls, but make sure that they have the opportunity to cast a provisional ballot and then their registration status is checked if it turns out that they were eligible to vote that day, that ballot gets counted. So those things are all cleared by the clerk and the clerk's office employees uh, in the days following the election. And then official results are posted um, to the state secretary's office. They're the uh, state election commission. But the nice thing is that in the night of the election, we aren't kept waiting. We know what they are because you're giving us the unofficial results and we broadcast them right here on the channels and then we post them up on our bulletin board. So it's a good communication flow. And then, of course, our local paper, the Foxborough Reporter, gives everything uh, the following the Thursday and then we have hopefully official election results. And we've not had, I, I think one of the things that maybe at the beginning of the program I said, take it for granted. I think the reason why I said that is because we take it for granted that elections are gonna go without a hitch here in Foxville. We've not right. heard of nonsense or issues or problems. I think back in the um, mid 2000s, we had an issue with one of the machines and so we bought yes. new machines. Uh, yeah. It was something where I think we take it very seriously, all of us right. um, in Foxborough. I know we here at Cable Access take seriously our role. Uh, Lauren Batar every year <laughs> yes. uh, with her uh, cadre of volunteers uh, uh, makes the extra effort to ensure that we're on the air and ready to bring uh, the results so and she's been doing that for so long um, right, exactly the uh, question then I guess comes up um, what are the challenges um, the larger challenge that we face each election well, one is getting people in the door it's getting voters to turn out well let's take care of that vote <laughs> please please <laughs> Monday May 4th 2015 polls open at 7 a.m. at the Ahern Middle School hope to see you there and they go on for 13 hours that's a long day it is a long day for a volunteer position um, well the fact is we're not volunteer all election workers are paid okay are paid there's a stipend um, for warden and uh, those election workers are there are paid hourly for their time. Good. It's, it's, a, it's small, um, but nonetheless, we, we are not volunteers. Um, uh, dedicated people who do this for a long time, and certainly is not a living wage, but uh, <laughs> the people are, are paid. Good. Thank you. So then with that, I, I suppose the next question is, uh, with the challenge of getting people in the door, I, I would just like to say, voting is easy here in Foxborough. The yes. school is very accessible. Uh, it's handicapped accessible. Uh, there are a lot of volunteers that make it easy to know what's going on. And uh, I know right. that my ward, uh, ward precinct, Thank my you. precinct four, uh, I, I see a lot of the same people every year. And uh, it, it's, there's no, n no hoops to jump through. It seems like a very easy process. So it's not only our goal, but our obligation to be sure that that's the case. Um, and the reason you see familiar faces, that is by intent. Mm -hmm. um, part of the goal, <clears throat> and we get asked frequently too, why am I not asked for ID or why certain people are? And the fact is that by law, we can't just pick and choose whom we ask for ID. That mm -hmm. would be considered uh, discriminatory, intimidating. Uh, so there are regulations. The only time people are asked for ID uh, on a regular basis is if it's the first time they're voting in person and they've registered 
either by mail or through the registry, um, so that they need at some point to show proof of ID, whether it's when you register or the first time you show up. So th there's a few occasions when we'll ask for ID and they are sent uh, to see us. But other than that, um, we count on the familiarity of people in town to recognize. Mm -hmm. It helps if we find someone who isn't quite certain which precinct they're supposed to vote in or if they are even registered in Foxborough. Uh, and being able to recognize people uh, from the poll worker's side is, is, is by design. Um, and it all, we also hear people uh, come in saying, I wouldn't know where to go if I didn't see that face. And so it does, we hear help people feel comfortable uh, getting in and voting efficiently. And I want to talk about the uh, interaction between the town clerk's office and your office on the day of the election. But before we get to that, what if I come in there and I'm confused? I don't know what my precinct is. Maybe I don't remember if I'm registered in Foxborough. Maybe I just moved from Walpole and I just don't, right. I don't know if my registration made it through. Can I take care of it that day? What do I do? Most all of these things we can take care of on the spot. Um, we have on the wall, posted everywhere, the familiar list, precinct list yes. by street should help you uh, find which precinct uh, you'll be reporting to. We have, everyone is carrying one of those around or has one at the table because that's a quite frequent question. So we have that information available to get you to the correct precinct based on what street you live on. Um, if there are questions about registration, I don't know if I'm registered to vote. We have that information at the information table. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've moved, that's the next greatest challenge we have is people who get to the precinct table and they're not on the voting list. When they come to us, there are several things that can cause it. If you've moved recently, and depending on the time frame, you may still be on the list at your old address if you're still in town. Uh, you may be listed, or if you fail to return your census, if we do not get the census return, you can become inactivated. Uh, and, and that's the census that we all receive by mail. Correct. And we can also register so, our dog for that. Yes, yes, yes. But because your voter registration is tied to your residential address, mm -hmm. if the town doesn't know your residential address, you've not been located in the census. And you won't be on the list. You're still registered to vote, but we don't know where. Gotcha. So that's, uh, and, and that, that we can quite readily uh, determine at the polls. It'll, there's a form that you have to sign, an affirmation um, of your residential address where you swear that in fact that's where you are. That form goes on file and we can reactivate you on the spot. That's, those are the folks we'll take over and we'll add you back to the list. And gotcha. then we update your address because now we know where you are. Uh, but if someone is not registered in our town or not registered at all, we both check the list to see if you're at another location, if you've moved. If you've been inactivated, sometimes family members will change the census list. That happens to college students frequently oh. or people in the military or those who have worked overseas for a stretch of time. Mm -hmm. The family may say, well, they're not here now. They crossed them off the census, so we temporarily lost they become inactive. I um, noticed that my daughter, who's away at college, is no longer on the list. So, so um, we have to determine then, did you register to vote at school? If that's the case, you uh, we generally get a notification from the new location when you move somewhere and register. That clerk, city or town clerk, will generally send notice to your previous address while you're asked your previous location in mm -hmm. which you're registered. They contact the other office to make sure. There's also a central database maintained by the state, and that was there. The next step at the polls, if we can't determine exactly what's going on from the list that we have, call to the office and they can access that state database. It will tell us if you are registered. If you've moved here from Stoughton, it'll say, no, you are still registered to vote at the address in Stoughton. In which case, if it's a state or federal election, if you can make it to Stoughton in time to vote, you're <laughs> still on their rolls. Otherwise, we need to uh, affect that actual change. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's typically what comes up in terms of registration questions. Okay. So, but the 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 high message is that you should come on down and, oh, absolutely. and give it, you know, an effort to clear it up because don't be intimidated by you don't know because right. you can find out. We can find out, and in any case, if there's still a question, if something unusual happened, uh, 
voters have the right to cast a provisional ballot, mm -hmm. which you will vote, we will seal it in an envelope, and investigate further at the office after the to find out just what your status was. And you have every effort to make sure that your vote is counted if you are eligible to vote. Uh, and that's what the provisional ballot system is for. Well, speaking as a citizen, it's comforting to know that every vote counts and every vote is taken seriously. So thank right. you for that. I was watching a recent Board of Selectmen meeting and I saw that our town clerk, Bob Cutler, um, had approached them with uh, a ballot initiative uh, that he is sponsoring to give uh, tenure to the town clerk's office. And the discussion was very interesting. I thought I was watching on Foxborough Cable Access on your favorite government channel, which you should also uh, keep yourself in touch. The um, issue of, uh, and I, I think I know, I know enough to be dangerous, but not enough to be knowledgeable. So <laughs> the town clerk's office is an elected office. Correct. How does that work on the years when the town's clerk office is up for election? Um, there's a couple things here. Uh, on in the years when the town clerk is up every for election. Every three years. Every three years, it's a three-year office. Um, there are certain of the tasks in preparation for an election and uh, operations on the election day itself, which obviously a candidate is on the ballot can't be directly involved. Sure. And in those cases, uh, a lot of tasks uh, need to be delegated out because because the the clerk, him or herself, just should not be handling the tabulation of results. Um, and there are functions in advance that uh, either the staff in the office, the assistant clerk, uh, and the election clerk uh, can take care of. Uh, at times, the clerk has called in clerks from neighboring towns to assist since they know the procedures. Mm -hmm. um, they can have other people assist with preparation of things that, that they either don't want to or can't handle um, in order to eliminate any concerns about conflict of interest. Now, not all clerks are elected. I think in, in Massachusetts, clerks can either be appointed or elected. Correct. And so uh, not every town goes through this process as far as having that conflict. The majority of towns in Massachusetts, towns and cities, um, still have elected clerks, but there are, and I don't know the exact number, mm -hmm. um, there are towns where that um, position has been, uh, is appointed by a board of selectmen or um, a city council or a town manager. It all depends on how it's been um, changed. Now, I'm a rules geek, and, and I, 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 you and I... <laughs> it's one of the reasons we get along. <laughs> That's right. There we go. <laughs> and it always fascinates me about any uh, appointed position or any elected position, because you've always got a constituency. You always have people you're answering to, and mm -hmm. people like to pretend, and I will say pretend, uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm completely... Well, nobody is ever above the people that they know, work with, support them, because we all got to whatever. I, I'm here on cable access because I have a great crew that supports me by coming out here in the mornings to uh, tape these programs. If I was a jerk and I didn't thank them or I, I started not doing things right, they could just as easily fall off my bandwagon. You as viewers don't have to watch me if I start doing things that are uninteresting, start you know blathering about things that are completely off the wall, maybe you stop watching. So we've all got a constituency, we've all got customer base. So with an appointment, there are certain, um, we'll say, conflicts that are inherent because whoever does the appointing uh, has uh, the, the uh, uh, you know, ability to unappoint you. I think we went through that with the Conservation Commission several years ago. There was a, a, a brouhaha and some Good things happen, and, and maybe some uh, things that weren't so good maybe got exposed. And, and at the end of the day, I always feel strongly that the right thing happens, because we as a community are fairly transparent. We are uh, good communicators, and we do have, such as with cable access, we have a local press that not every community has, uh, but we also have a strong volunteer base, and we also have uh, our positions, the elected offices, uh, are done uh, they're all volunteers, and so it's not as if there's a huge uh, windfall for getting elected. So I, I have to feel in my heart of hearts that anybody who runs for elected office does so, uh, with the exception of town clerk's office is paid. <laughs> there are some paid offices, but um, selectmen, board of water and sewer commissioners, that sort of thing, uh, are, are all doing it for altruistic reasons. So that aside, 
elections happen for a reason to give people an opportunity, but then there's that inherent problem in the town clerk office, I suppose, is, is, is first and foremost in my mind right now because I, I was watching the Selectman's <laughs> meeting. That's got to be tough as, as the election warden because it's got to put a lot of extra burden on you because you're sort of doing double duty then, doing your job and the town clerk's role as far as pre-work and tabulations. and. It's not a huge difficulty, but it does change the routine mm -hmm. uh, we've established for, for doing the elections. Um, I suspect it's more difficult for the clerk uh, where there are certain tasks we're used to taking care of um, that he feels either necessarily or, or he can't be involved with or just feels it's better that he not be so that there are no questions involved. I mean, fortunately, I mean, all time I've been involved with this, working with Marie Crimmins and with Bob Cutler, they're both highly sensitive to making sure not only are things done correctly, mm -hmm. but that people perceive that they're done correctly because that's the only way the voters and residents have confidence in what comes out. Um, so while it's not a huge burden, it does change things and it does require um, them to, to make adjustments in, in a lot of these tasks, which as you mentioned before, are kind of invisible otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's managed, uh, but it, uh, it does require um, delegation of tasks uh, in different ways than, than on a year when they're not up for election. And then in this year's ballot, there is uh, the initiative that's been put forth by our town clerk to uh, give them tenure, and that's a, that's a voted upon um, right. initiative. And if that were to pass, and I know you're not the expert on this, I'm just, I, I was watching this election meeting, it just fascinated <laughs> me. And I'm really glad you're on today. By the way, I'm with Kathy Brady, who is our <laughs> election warden, and we're still running out of time, so I'm gonna make this quick. Right. The uh, uh, tenure is an opportunity to not have him go through the election, but it is still an elected office. Correct. Uh, the only parts of this that I'm familiar with is because I have to be able to answer questions about the election law and understand what's happening. Um, by law, an incumbent candidate who's been in office for at least five years mm -hmm. and uh, can, get, by petition, collect enough signatures, 5% of the voters, to get a question on the annual town election ballot, uh, granting that person tenure in the job. The office itself is not tenured. The incumbent candidate is tenured, mm -hmm. um, and the office itself is still considered an elected position and therefore is subject to the same oversight as any other elected position other than having to run for election on the normal cycle. So uh, that would just um, relieve Bob Cutler having to run for election every three years mm -hmm. uh, and all uh, the campaigning and the office questions that uh, then would come into play. And then it would allow the office to run more smoothly as far as uh, having the annual, well, the elections would have it would be, a, what I'm trying to say is that it would take away some of the issues that happen. Since his name would not be on the ballot every three years, then there'd be uh, no need to reassign those tasks or for him to be hands off on those years yep. uh, but, uh, when he comes up. But since we're so running out of time, it sounds as though the real issue here is that the elections in Foxborough are handled in very good hands. And Kathy Brady, who is our election warden, is ready, ready and waiting for you to come down to the polls on Monday, May 4th, starting at 7 a.m., closing at 8 p.m. I'm not gonna say vote early, vote often. Kathy gets angry at me when I say things like that. <laughs> but I will that. say vote once and make your vote count. On behalf of all the volunteers here at Cable Access, and thank you, Kathy, for coming out. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a great day, Foxborough. Take care.